Hey, what's up guys? Today I got a video for you talking about why your win rate doesn't really matter when it comes to being a consistently profitable trader. Um, let's just get right into it. So starting off, I had a little quote here, which sort of sums up this whole idea in one sent or two sentences. It's by famous investor George Soros. Um, if you don't know him, look him up. He's a billionaire. Um, he's known for you know breaking the Bank of England, uh, making you know over a billion dollars in a day. <laughs> so uh, crazy dude. You should look him up. But the quote is: "It's not whether you are right or wrong that's important. It's how much you make when you're right and how much you make when you're wrong." Um, Basically, what this quote is saying is when it comes to investing, trading, whatever, it really, you know, it doesn't matter if you're right every time. It just matters if you make, you know, more than you lose when you're right than when you're wrong. Um, so let's get a little more in depth. So uh, here's Dave, you know, Dave the hot dog. Um, I just I didn't want to put a human. So I was like, fuck it. Uh, you know, so I put a hot dog. And we calling um, I'm calling him Dave because he looks like a Dave. So right here is why most traders um, sort of get this wrong. This whole idea about win rate and and really just you know being a good trader in general. Um, this is this is usually how it goes. So Dave decides he wants to give uh, you know trading a shot. Uh, you know doesn't have a whole lot of knowledge about it, but you know he sees people making money, so he's like I'm gonna start trading. He opens a trading account. And he tries to win most of the time. You know, he wants a high win rate because he's, um, I would say he's only human, but uh, that wouldn't really be true. Um, but basically, it's, it's human nature. We're just going to say human nature here to want to win, right? Everyone wants to win. Nobody likes losing. It's not really a fun, pleasant experience to lose, especially when it involves money. No one wants to lose money. Um so, you know, he tries to win most of the time, and he also risks way too much per trade. Um, a, because he's inexperienced, he doesn't know much about risk management, you know, um, he's not really looking at the downside, he's only looking at the upside. He, you know, he's risking, he's like, dude, why would I risk less money? So if I win, I make $200 instead of $500, that's stupid. Well, it's not stupid if you lose. <laughs> So that's what happens. So he's risking too much. He's trying to win everything. And what ends up happening is he loses a good chunk of his money. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, like I said, due to his risk management. He loses a lot of money. And so this leads to him taking his wins quickly because, well, he's scared of losing more money. And also he wants to keep his profits you know he's it's partial greed taking profits too early and it's partial fear you know fear of turning that small win into a loser um which of course leads to more money being lost and this leads to him risking even more per trade because he's trying to make up the lost money he's trying to hold trades longer than before in drawdown because he's scared of losing another trade. So he's like, okay, I'll just wait and, you know, it'll probably come back up. Which, as we know, is not a good strategy, I would hope. So it uh, leads to even less money uh, being made, more money being lost. And this also means he's going to take profits even quicker than he did before. Um, out of fear, mostly. Um, because, going back to the last uh, point... You know, he doesn't want to lose another trade. He wants to, you know, have a winner for once because um, he's a beginner. Most likely his win rate's not going to be all too high as much as he would hope it would be. Um, and all of this good stuff, the greed, the fear, the greed, the fear, all these emotions get in the, in, get in the way. And this leads to a blown account. You know, his house gets foreclosed. His wife leaves him. His car gets repoed, you know, he goes bald, 
even though he doesn't have hair to begin with. And now he's living on the street. Now, of course, uh, I had a little bit of fun there, but <laughs> most of the stuff isn't going to happen. However, a blown account is very likely. So, um, how can you? How how can he fix this? How can how can um, you know he shift his mindset from trying to win uh, all the time and not take a loss uh, to you know being a good trader and making money, regardless of sort of regardless of how much you win and how much you lose in terms of uh, number of trades. So let's let's really dive into this here. We have two traders here, very different traders. We have two traders here. Uh, we're going to start off with trader two because I think that's really going to highlight. Um, it's really going to highlight trader one and what he's doing good or she. Fun fact, by the way. Girls actually usually are better traders than guys because they can manage their emotions better. They don't have as big of an ego, etc. So when it says his here, I should have put they or something because, um, you know, there are girl traders out there and usually they're doing pretty good. So we're going to start off with trader two. He, let's just say he wins 70% of trades, which, you know, on the surface, it looks really good. You know, good trader when winning, you know, majority of the time, you know, he should be doing good, right? Or she. <clears throat> well, if we dive deeper into what, um, you know, they're doing, we're going to see that, that that that's not really the case. So next point, takes profits quickly, sometimes even before it hits one to one risk reward. So you know, let's say they're risking 50 pips and their target's 100 pips. It gets 50 pips in the profit and they take, you know, they take the trade off. They're like, okay, that was a good win. Solid. Um, even though, you know, there was no reason to really take it off. They just wanted the win. They wanted the money. They didn't want a loss. <clears throat> you know, it might be either because of greed or it might be because of fear. But either way, it's not good. Next. This trader will increase size when on a losing streak. So if they're down 5, 10, 20 percent, they're going to double, triple, maybe, you know, even more uh, increase their size, which means also they will increase their risk. <sighs> Next thing this trader does never adds to winners. Why? Because, well, they, you know, the winners are taken off the table very quickly. There isn't even an opportunity to add because trade's done you know um never adds to their winners but they do add to their losses and this sort of goes to the last point there's no hard stop points either mental or actual placing a stop they're just gonna feel out the trade you know if it looks like you're wrong okay i'll get out but you know if there it looks like it might might reverse then they'll stay in the trade um and then if it also looks like it might reverse they'll going back to this point add to their losers they're going to add and, you know, make up that loss, right? Well, of course, we know that's <laughs> not going to end well. And lastly, this trader has poor risk management. They're risking between 5 and 50, maybe maybe even 100% per trade. Probably not, but 5 to 50% per trade. Just really bad risk management. You got to think about it, even, even on the low end, even 5%. Let's say this trader <clears throat> loses three, four, five trades in a row, which isn't crazy. Um, you know, even with the 70% win rate, that, that isn't very crazy. That's a 25% drawdown just because of a few trades. So that's not really ideal. <clears throat> so yeah, that's trader two. When we take a in-depth look at how they trade, it, uh, you know, maybe they're not really profitable with the 70% win rate because their losers are much bigger than their winners, right? Let's look at Trader 1, who only has a 40% win rate. Only 40%. I mean, this trader must be, you know, kind of struggling. Like, this trader's not doing very well, right? Well, let's take a closer look. This trader, uh, you know, I'm going to come back to this point. This trader adds to their winners for even bigger winners. So when they're winning, they look for you know a, a place to add, and if they find one, 
um, this trader adds, adds, uh, adds another position. So when they win, you know, they make a good amount of money on those 40%. Um, and this person's losses are very calculated. They have a, you know, tight, uh, not a tight stop, but very tight risk management. They have a place they're going to get out and they get out when it hits that spot. And they don't hold longer than that. And it's also small, you know, relatively, 1% to 2% per trade. So, you know, blowing blowing an account is, is kind of hard for trader number one because they have to lose a lot of trades in a row. Like, a lot. <laughs> Next, this trader will size down when they are out of sync with the market. You know, they, just, they don't feel it. And also <clears throat> when they have a string of losses. So if they lose... <clears throat> five trades six trades in a row instead of risking two or one percent they might risk one or half a percent um, per trade and then going back to this point this trader will only move their stop to break even when they're deep in profit or a position is added so this this sort of um, gets into asymmetrical risk a little bit um, which basically means you have, how do I put this? Basically asymmetrical risk is when your upside is way bigger than your downside by like a large margin. That's basically what asymmetrical risk is a little bit, not quite, but I'll get more into that on my trade recap I have coming out probably tomorrow, FYI. Uh, GJ trade recap. Um, yeah, so uh, with this 40% win rate and this 70% win rate, who do you think is making more money? Do you think it's trader number two with their high win rate or trader number one with their you know lower win rate? Less than 50%. Usually people don't see that as very good, right? Well, I mean, hopefully the answer is somewhat clear. Trader number one is is making more money, um, and is more profitable and is you know more consistent on a month to month basis. So um, why is that? Well, this is what their profit distribution looks like. They're winners, they're, they're big winners that they let run and add positions to are very large. And then they have small winners, you know, maybe they'll take partials and get stopped out at break even or, you know, they close a trade because news or whatever. But then they have some smaller wins, which, you know, will obviously be more frequent than their big wins. Um, and then they have small losses, which will be, you know, of course, more frequent than their big wins and maybe more frequent than their small wins. However, as you can see, the big wins more than make up for the small losses. Um, let's look at this a little more technically. So this is trader number one, and this is trader number two. This is over 100 trades, their profit distribution. And in, in these is the number of trades won or lost, right? I'm gonna give you guys a second to digest this information, given, you know, uh, all this information here and apply it here. So I'm just going to give you guys a second while I drink some water. All right, so I guess we'll start off with trader number two again. As you can see, let's just break this down. They have some large wins. A few times they've decided to hold their trade for whatever reason. And so they make you know, a good chunk of money. Um, and then they have a lot of small wins, right? Like I said, they'll take their trade off before it hits their target or gets you know somewhat close to their target. They take it off because they want the win. So there's a lot of small wins, right? So this contributes to a high win rate. But... On the loss side, they have large losses, right? Only 30, 35 out of, uh, okay, well, this math is off. 
Um, this should be 40. <laughs> so 40, 40 losses. Or, I'm sorry, 30. Man, that's some good math right there. 30 losses out of 70, um, you know, wins. They, they shouldn't, they should be doing good, right? Well, like I said, they hold on to their losses or they add to their losses. And also their risk management is poor. So they, they're already risking too much if, if they lose. And as you can see, their losses um, eat up all the gains that they made. Because they're, they're just holding their losses, they're not holding their winners, they're adding to losses, not adding to winners. And of course, by the way, this is the like worst case scenario. This is just like a really bad trader. Like, of course, I'm sure most of you guys aren't, you know, doing it like this, but probably on a lesser extent, you know. Maybe you have trouble holding winners, or you have, you know, you, you might hold your losses a little too long. Like, it might not be this bad, but, um, like I said, on a lesser extent, I think, you know, a lot of traders go wrong here. So, let's bring it over to trader number one. The trader with only a, uh, you know, 40% win rate. And, um... Okay, at least this math adds up. So, so um, let's start off with their wins, right? Like I said, this trader will hold on to their winners and they will add positions to their winners. Um, and as they add positions, they will, you know, uh, move their stops to break even on previous positions, etc., etc. And so when they have these large wins, which doesn't occur very often, um, they win, you know, they, they make a lot of money. And then they have small wins, which, you know, they make an okay amount of money on them. Um, these small wins could be because they didn't find a place to add a position or they risked less on this win because they were in drawdown. Like, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, not every win would be a big win. But, you know, so small wins add up a little bit. And then they have a lot of losses, right? This, per this person has... 55 losses out of 100 trades, but 1 or 2% per trade, you know, um, it's fine. The, the, the losses aren't that bad uh, when you compare them to, to the large wins and the small wins. Um, and, you know, I don't know if these bar lengths are perfectly accurate of course it depends but in general this is what you know how, how it should look how a good trader should look and this is why i say that your win rate i hope you would see by now doesn't matter what matters a lot more is how you manage your trades if you're adding positions if you're holding your positions you know if you're cutting the losses quickly and if your position sizing is good and of course, you're somewhat profitable, like, you know, 40% win rate, 50% win rate. Um, even maybe a 35 or 30% win rate. If you're really doing these good, you'll, you'll be profitable. You'll be consistent. And lastly, um, your win rate won't matter as much if you're doing these things right. Because a 5% variance in win rate won't make or break you if you're if you're holding your winners if you're cutting losses quick if you're adding positions to your winners and not adding positions to your losers um you know a five percent variance in win rate or even 10 won't make a huge difference in profitability whereas here <laughs> if they were you know if they all of a sudden went from a 70 percent win rate here to a um let's say 60 or 50 percent win rate that is really going to affect them. I mean, their account should be like, you know, blown anyway, but their account will will decrease in value a lot faster if their win rate drops, even like I said, 10%. So, you know, you can have a bad month, but if you still are doing these things right, then, you know, you won't be down very much. You know, you, won't be, you shouldn't be down 10, 20, 30% in one month if, if, like I said, you're doing these things right. So what matters a lot more is your emotions, managing your emotions, being sure you're thinking clearly, you know, through every single trade, 
trying to find places you can maybe add, trying to, um, you know, um, get your position sizing down, uh, making sure you're not going to be risking too much, uh, and just, you know, just hold your trades. You know, I think that's the problem a lot of people have. They just can't hold their winners. And I get it. It's uncomfortable. Um, this trader feels a lot more comfortable while they're in trades. This trader feels not very comfortable while they're in trades. But this trader will make a lot more money. <laughs> that's why, uh, you know, profitable trading, a lot of people are like, dude, I still feel like uncomfortable. I still, you know... Um, like, dude, you're not, like, this is a game of probability. You're not going to feel positive about every single trade. You're just not. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. News could come out. Maybe maybe you're just flat out wrong. And, like, it's fine. Just, like, take the loss and then find another trade. It shouldn't be a big deal if you lose one trade. If it is, you're risking way too much. Or you just care too much about your win rate. Pretty simple. And, um... I like to think I kind of practice what I preach a little bit. I'm still trying to, you know, improve. But these are my stats for this year. Uh, I started, like, a new account, and I've just been trading on it. Um, so these are my stats from my FX book for this year, you know, starting, like, January or something like that. So starting off here. First of all, these trade this isn't correct. I don't think I did. I haven't. I haven't taken 114 trades. I'm pretty sure what happens is when you enter and take a partial profit and then like exit, that would count as like three trades. So I think that's why this number is so high. In terms of profitability, it's sitting around like 45 percent, something like that. 45 percent uh, of my trades are winners. That means most of the time. Um, you know, I get stopped out or I close the trade. However, if you look over here, my average win, 90 pips. Average loss is 37 pips. If you just did the math here, you would see this is a, you know, profitable system. Um, and then here, best trade, 400 pips. Um, you know, that was a nice win. Worst trade was only 141 pips. So, as you can see, I like to keep my losses, you know, quite a bit smaller than <clears throat> my winners. And also, by the way, I have no idea how this number is possible. I guess um, it's just because I've closed out trades, like, early a lot of times. Because for the most part, my stop is, like, 50 pips or more. So, I think this is just because I've closed out trades early because of news or I was just unsure about the position so I just took it off um, so I just wanted FYI there like my stops are wider than 37 pips I hope you know that um, but yeah and then if you look at the pip distribution here um, I'm not really sure what happened this day but um, yeah I don't know anyways as you can see my loss you know the the losses <laughs> are very for the most part, pretty small compared to uh, my winners. Um, and at the same on the on the same token, my position size um, is different between my winners and my losers. Um, like like here, as you can see, I was sort of not doing too well, and so I sized down. I sized down, and so it wasn't that bad. And you know, when I started feeling confident, I was. Um, sizing up on my positions, which you can't really see my position size here, so um, you don't really get that info, but uh, so yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that uh, uh, it is possible, it is possible to do this, it's not some myth, it, it just takes emotional um, discipline, and you know, I would like to get these numbers up, I would like to get my average win to, you know, at least over 100, maybe 200, like that would be dope, but um Anyways, guys, I hope this this helped. I hope you learned a little bit of something about how you should be tracking your your uh, you know metrics. You should be looking at okay, how many positions have I added? And in the last month, if you haven't added any positions to your winners, that's something you should probably improve on. If your losses are you know pretty big compared to your winners, then you know that's something you need to improve on. If 
and you're holding your winners the same amount of time you're holding your losers that is definitely something um, you need to look at so there's a ton of stats to look at before you look at your win rate right like I'm not really focused on win rate I don't care about win rate I I honestly could care less I care about my P&L I care about if I lose money or not I care about if you know my position size I care about how much I'm risking and I care about if I'm if I'm holding my trades and I'm adding positions um, and for me that's very uncomfortable I mean for everyone that's uncomfortable you know being up 200 pips and then you know taking on more risk by adding a position to try to make three four hundred that's very uncomfortable because that 200 could go down to 100 and it could go down to zero it could um, that's just a part of the game but you know if you understand how these stats you will take that risk and you'll have to deal with it being uncomfortable <laughs> um, yeah guys I hope you you enjoyed this I hope it helped um, like I said, I have a GJ trade recap coming out. Uh, FYI, it's not a winner. It's not a winner. I can't really say it's a loser, but it's not a winner. So uh, stay tuned. I think you know uh, that'll be a very informative video coming out. You know, probably tomorrow or something. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, feel free to give it a like. And if you, um, you know, um, want to see more content like this, if you really enjoyed it, if you learned something, uh, feel free to subscribe because I will be uploading minimum once a week. You know, obviously I'll try for more. And um, if you don't, by some chance, uh, follow my Instagram because I know most of you people are watching here from my Instagram. But if you're not following my Instagram, then... Um, this is my handle, my life with Forex, no spaces, no dots, no whatever. Um, feel free to give it a follow. Have a good day, guys.